what is the slope of the line that contains the point 7 halves, negative 19 fourths, and negative 2 thirds, 57 eighths? So I will do this problem because those the, the people who wrote this problem want us to do it this way by using the formula. But you know I am not a fan of blindly using formulas. So maybe after we do this, we will uh, work it out or we'll visualize it a little bit to show us that the formula really is just measuring the inclination of the line. So if I have two points, so let's say one point is x1, y1, and that the other point is, is x2, y2, the slope of a line, and they use the letter m for the slope of the line, is going to be the difference between the y's. And you want to make sure you get the order right. So if we start with y2, if you view y2 as the end point, it's going to be y2 minus y1. And once again, if you started with y2, you're going to have to start with x2 in the denominator. We started with y2 in the numerator. We're going to start with x2 in the denominator. It's going to be x2 minus, minus x1. So that's the slope between these two points. So if we pick this to be x1, y1, so let's do that. Let's say that this one right over here is x1 and y1, in which case x1 itself will be equal to 7 halves. And y1 will be equal to negative 19 over 4. right? All I did is I set this is x1, y1. And if we set this over here to be x2, y2, then we know that x2 is going to be equal to negative 2 thirds. And that y2 is going to be equal to 57, 57 over 8. And then we essentially can just apply what we know about the slope. The slope between those two points is going to be equal to y2, which is 57 over 8, 57 over 8, minus y1, which is 19 over 4, minus, which is 19 over 4. All of that over x2. x2 is negative 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds, minus, minus x1, which is 7 which is 7 halves. And now frankly, the hardest part of actually doing this is to, is to deal with the fractions over here. So let's, let's multiply. There's a bunch of ways that we could actually think about doing it. We could multiply, we could multiply, well, let me just do it. Let me just do it straight up. So a common denominator over here would be 8, would be 8. So this is 57 over 8. Let me do it in that same color so we don't get our math mixed up, 57 over 8. And then if I were to write 19 over 4 with the denominator of 8, I multiplied 4 times 2 to get 8. So I have to multiply 19 times 2, so I get 38. And then that's going to be over. A common denominator over here is going to be 6. That's their least common multiple. So negative 2 thirds is the same thing as negative 4, 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then negative 7 halves over 6. If I write it with a denominator of 6, 2 times 3 is 6. So 7 times 3 is 21. And so now I can simplify. This numerator right over here is going to be equal to, let's see, 57 minus 37 would be 20. So this is going to be 1 less than that, because I'm subtracting 38. So it's going to be negative 19, negative 19, or sorry, positive 19. Positive 19, 57 is clearly greater than 38. So 57 minus, so it's 19 over 8 over, I'll do this in pink, negative 4 minus 21 over 6 gives us negative 25, negative 25 over 6. And so I have 19 over 8 divided by negative 25 over 6. When you divide by a fraction, so 19, this is the same thing as multiplying as multiplying by its reciprocal. Multiplying by negative 6 over 25. And let's see, we can do some simplification right over here. In the numerator and the denominator are both divisible by 2. So let's divide them both by 2. This becomes a 3. This becomes a 4. And we are left with, we are left with 19 times 3. 19 times 3 is going to be 3 less than 20 times 3. So it's going to be 57. You have 30 plus 27. So it's going to be 57. Let me write it over here, actually. It's going to be equal to 57 over 4 times 25. That's pretty straightforward. 4 times 25 is just, 
is just 100. So we get a slope of we get a slope of 57. Oh, I want to be careful. I have that negative sign there, and I almost overwrote it when I, I have this negative sign right over here. So let me be very clear. 19 times negative 3 is going to be negative 57. And then 4 times 25 is 100. So our slope is negative 57 over 100. And that's about how much we can simplify it. And we are done. And I encourage you, if you have time, so that you get a sense for why this is working out, plot these two points on a, on a, on a, on, on a coordinate plane. And you'll see that this thing right over here, y2 minus y1, that really is just your change in y. And you'll see that the x2 minus x1 really is just your change in x. And I also encourage you, pay, take this point as x1, y1, and take this one as x2, y2, and you'll see that you'll still get the same result. As long as over here, we took we in the numerator, we took this guy minus this guy, in the denominator, this guy minus that guy. If we did it the other way around, in the numerator, you would have this guy minus that guy, and then in the denominator, this guy minus this guy. The key is, whichever one you picked first, you have to pick the first one, you have to pick it in the numerator and the denominator, you have to pick it from the same coordinate. So these both came from the same coordinate. These both came from the same coordinate. So I encourage you to swap these around, and you should get the same result.